Welcome back viewers, this is, Sid, this is still the press reaching you live from the nation's capital Abuja and right now we've been joined by our guests to discuss or uh, analyze some of the um, headlines that made it to our national dealings and um, our guest for today is um, Mr. Richard Oriri. Mr. Richard Oriri is a politician. You're welcome sir. Good morning. Welcome to Good the show. Good morning. Anna. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Richard, uh, going through all the national, all, all, all the um, Nigerian newspaper, uh, the headlines, the headlines are all screaming uh, the minimum wage. Now this one here says from the point, he says federal government's labor tax deadlock, NLC de de defense 615,000 naira demands. Now I'm talking about this particular demands, can you bring us up to speed or what you think with this whole thing minimum wage? Thank you very much. The, the issue of a minimum wage uh, between Nigerian Labour Union and uh, the government, I think uh, it's something that we need to, to get to the end by now. And we have not gotten to the end and we are still not, we are still not sure if the end is here. I held, I overheld uh, the president saying that uh, the Labour, the Labour cry it will soon be over or oh, it's over. Days but of worry are over. Uh, days of worries are over. But I don't I don't see it getting to an end very soon because uh, like uh, politics has so really uh, sincerely politics are taking over the entire labor system. And uh, from the government angle from the way the labor union they have positioned themselves, they are equally making things so easy for those in government to be playing football with them. Mm. And uh, I think is their right. And from the happenings presently in the country, all of us, every one of us, even Nigerians, if you allow Nigerians to say, decide the labor, uh, the minimum wage for labors, I think on behalf of the, the entire citizens of this country, they will give better wages for labor for, for labor in the country. But those who are representing the electorate, those who are representing the rest of us like you and I now, mm -hmm. they, they are not actually seeing things from the perspective that we, we, we as normal citizens, we are seeing it from. Because these labor workers, they are our parents, they are our mothers, they are our fathers, and the suffering they are, that they are in now is our own suffering. We jointly share the same suffering with them. And it's is 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 the right time for them to at least sincerely smile. But if the president will tow the part that he is already towing and then uh, make things easy for them, every one of us will be happy. And uh, like now, liberal liberal they are talking about six six hundred and fifteen thousand naira, so uh, uh, the minimum. Uh, but it's, that is high. That is quite high. But nothing less than three hundred thousand or nothing less than two hundred and fifty thousand naira should be the benchmark to me. Because things are quite high in Nigeria today. All right, we are, all right, all right, viewers. Uh, a reminder that our phone lines are is now open for you to call in or give in your contribution, or rather still, or better still, ask a question. Okay. All right. So I, I hear you make um, a statement with regards to um, the fact that the normal Nigerians, we the normal Nigerians, but then if someone that looks at you and he he hears your designation as politician will not take you as. The normal around <laughs> right. those politicians, the politicians and their politicians. I'm a politician. Oh, that's are like you, are you that the politician? The or politician. politician? That, I'm a politician that, uh, that, that that is with the masses. I'm oh, not okay. a politician that is are with the politicians group that are with against the masses. There are politicians that are with the masses. There are politicians that are not with the masses. Uh -huh. Those who are with the masses, they are the compassionate politicians who. Uh, venture into politics to serve the people, not to serve themselves and to serve the country as well. All right, so so I hear you. And I say am one of those class of uh, politicians. Interesting. Let Nigerians be the judge, uh, Richard or By the grace of God. Okay, yeah. so I hear you talk about the fact that um, um, uh, President Bola Ametinobu's statement, where he said that the days of worrying are over, but you say that you don't see it as. Um, you don't see that happening anytime soon. Are you saying that the president is making a political statement? We have heard so, so much of such a statement until it comes to reality before we can take his world serious. But it's not the type of error that uh, I see. I respect him so much. It's not the type of error that will say something and don't do it the way he says it. But you cannot just say that because there are too many other 
uh, bodies around him that may likely influence his decision more to do the, the normal thing that he actually wanted to do. But if he can stand on his ground to see that, let this be my, my, uh, my legacy for Nigerians, I think he can do it. But then the question should way. be 615,000 Naira minimum it's quite wage. Is, it, is, it, is, that, is that possible? It's not possible. Uh, uh, Richard, uh, let me add to that. No. 15,000 Naira is not possible. It's not possible. But for me, Nigeria, Nigeria have the capacity, the financial capacity to at least put the benchmark at least like a 250,000 Naira minimum wage. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not too much. Okay, now let's look at this. This one say this says the NLC should make realistic and aff aff affordable demand. It should not just center on minimum wage. It must engage the government on appropriate industrial policies. This is coming from uh, Oshomole. Now I heard you say like you, okay, Annabelle rightly asked, and you said the six hundred and twenty, six hundred and fifteen thousand naira is quite high. So are you trying to say that uh, um, Comrade Oshomole is right on what he's saying or? Uh, Comrade Oshomole is quite right, <coughs> and if uh, you, if you, if you, uh, in a, a sane, a sane democratic environment mm. where real democracy is in oppression, democracy is in oppression in three different phases. One is vertical uh, phase, the other one is horizontal phase, and the third one is diagonal. The diagonal aspect of democracy is where power is shared between states and these uh, union bodies then the horizontal part is where power is being shared among organs of government mm -hmm. like the legislative arm the executive arm and the judicial arm and the other the the the, the vertical part of it is where power is being shared between the federal state and local government so the role the diagonal part is where labor union falls in and these civil society organizations, they put government to their toes. They put uh, decision policies of government, they are the one reshaping government policies. But in Nigeria, the labor department, they have not really done up to expectation. They have not really done up to expectation. But once we have these three phases in a good shape, then you will see real democracy in oppression because there will be check, proper checks and balances, there will be accountability, Question gov questioning government policies, like uh, some decisions taken by some government officials, many, too many people don't even question them. It's your right as a minister to take certain decisions, but it's our right as citizens, even civil society organizations, to questioning why, what has made you to arrive at this decision. Yes, you have taken the decision as the minister, mm -hmm. but why did you take this decision? It's our right to ask. And it's a, it's, it's a responsibility, the so-called minister is responsibility to tell us. That is yeah. where information is very vital. And not, and, and not making it look like more like a bully. Yes. <laughs> now, let me, let me add to this. You, if you are saying that the 615,000 hour demand is quite high and uh, unrealistic, like our comrade Oshomole said, have, uh, have you ever thought of this? You know, since the new administration came on board, Mr. President starts, um, started by removing the fuel subsidy which has led to you know economy crisis and the rest of it as today as we speak you can before the president's administration the a bag of rice wasn't up to fifty thousand or let's just say at most fifty thousand naira. as of today a bag of rice is more than seventy thousand or seventy thousand naira. not just that we before the administration we buy for fuel for not up to 200 naira, but as of today you and i know how much fuel is sold for um, regarding, um, in addition to the fuel scarcity and the rest of it. Now, if you are saying this is too much, have you ever thought of how uh, these people or tend to survive? You, you know, you do transportation, you, you, you stock up the house, you pay the electricity, you do all that. If you are saying this uh, demand is too much, have you ever thought uh, on that regard or in that regard? Uh, 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 we are all living in Nigeria. We are living in Nigeria. If it is a, a financial capability, Nigeria has the financial capability to tackle so? of that. But the 615,000 naira is quite high. And uh, the price of food stuff that has gone up to this level today now, you cannot just uh, corner that to just a uh, fuel subsidy removal alone. There are too many other factors that has led to that. Like what? Like, uh -uh. You are in Nigeria. You can become a farmer. 
and uh, my I, from, I am from Bedouin State. We, Bedouin State, uh, we are the food baskets of the nation. But insecurity has actually uh, done so much harm to the farmers that they can't even go to the farm. And today, the rice you talk about, uh, the rice today is about 70,000 naira or 70,000 naira. There has been a ban on the importation of rice into the country. And how many of uh, our farmers can go to the farm to even have more production? So, so, so those are major things affecting the price of food stuff in the market majorly. Then, if you talk about a fair subsidy, fair subsidy has been removed, yes, but the income, the uh, benefit of this uh, fair subsidy that have been removed. Federal government has actually channeled the, the profit they are making from the fair, fair subsidy remover to states. But what are the state governors doing with this SS that they are getting out of this fair subsidy that was removed? What are they doing with it? Before, like Benway State used to collect about three point something or four billion naira uh, federation allocation, but today it's, uh, it's around eight, eight, eight to nine billion naira. So our, our farmers are left without uh, information. They don't even nobody even have policies that drives the interests of the farmers. So and we have a good number of youth youth population that can go into farming, but they need encouragement. So 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 most of these things is not something that we just uh, throw to federal government. Be, Corner it to fair subsidy remover and the uh, high uh, hike in fair prices and all of those. No, there are too many factors all right. in, uh, uh, all right. involved in that. Let's quickly take this call. Good morning. Good morning, Anna and uh, colleague. Good morning. Welcome to the press. Good morning. I came calling us from Lagos. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, one thing I just want to comment here is uh, labor. For them calling 600 and uh, maybe 15,000 naira. Right. Uh, uh, the thing is this. I don't, uh, look, I'm not against the label, but the issue is there. Now, we are talking about 600 and, let me just 600 plus thousand at minimum wage. This, definitely, if I told the federal government will accept it, the only workers in Nigeria that will benefit from this will only be those employed by the state government or federal government. Mm. What are they talking about? Those working in those private organizations. I'm not talking about multinational companies. I'm right. talking about private organizations that still pay 20,000 naira to a graduate today. Right. That I thought, yes. So there are even people, myself as a graduate and a second class graduate, and I, I believe in myself, but I know the system in Nigeria. I just throw away the Nigeria system. I just take my own. But not everybody can do that. Because, and nobody will even have access to Nigeria gov uh, uh, government job without somebody knowing somebody through somewhere. So the labor, the, the labor should not come here giving us an, not an excuse at all. What are they talking about the underemployed Nigeria? What are they saying about those people? What are they say about those people that don't even have any education at all? Right. We are all Nigerians. We all have a, a, a right to the resources of this country. So, look, in as much as the executives are wrong, I'm not being specific to only this government. We are not on the right track right from the onset of the country. And I keep on saying it. It is just like a merry go round. Everything will still continue to remain the same until when Nigerians come to see this thing that I call of national conference is the same one that we will sit and map out things. See, well, okay, so all these schools students can lead this country appropriately if they are sincere. All right. So, uh, uh, to, to, to lastly, the labor leaders. They should just know what they are proposing because this thing is not even reasonable in Nigerian economy. Yes, I understand that if you go to Europe, uh, six hundred or something, maybe five hundred dollars, maybe somebody who I want that, that. I may personally I want that just because for an ignited Nigeria, I have my qualified certificate. But I know this thing. You know it, right. You know how what we are facing in this country. All right. So okay. never should stop all this nonsense. It's not going to work. They All right, I think. Something that is reasonable. God bless Nigeria. Thank you.
Thank God bless you, you too, Akim. Thank you so much for that contribution. Um, very well said, because I, was I also make the same statement when we're reading the headline. What happens to the unskilled um, workers or the masons on those people that are carrying um, pom -pom? I totally, uh, I totally align myself what with... What happens uh, to them? I totally align myself with what he, uh, he has said, because mm -hmm. labor, in most cases, they agitate to live for themselves. They don't even think of other workers, even those who work in the private sector. Because we, sector. All, we all use the same yes. market. I, 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 I got a call from somebody uh, in my state demanding for assistance and the person worked with 10 TA and I asked what is wrong what is going on in your organization he said they are they are uh, 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 these uh, million uh, workers all these these uh, casual mm. uh, laborers that their salary they paid them 15,000 uh, Oh wow. You understand? MTA, Nigerian Television Authority, mm. that they paid them 15,000 for the past uh, three months. They have not even paid them. So, and what 15,000 they've not paid them? Uh, it's not even up to the minimum wage that the federal government has approved before, the mm. 13,000, the 30,000 minimum mm. wage that they have approved before. And that is the federal government agency, Nigerian Television Authority. So, you, 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 you go back to people who are cleaners in some private homes. Mm. And they are, so they are workers. They are workers. They are workers. So, like, there are some people that collect 10,000 naira for 30 days right. in this country. So, if we are going to do anything, let it be uniform. If there is uniformity in what we are doing, I think everyone will feel uh, part of the country. But right. uh, the way things are going, some are just a uh, slave uh, that can't even voice out can't say and they, they, they are swallowing every pain just to ensure that uh, they have something to eat and just leave leave the home every it's, day it's, 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 it's really pathetic and like it's you sad. said i hope that the nlc would be able to harmonize this so that like I, I said earlier we're all using the same market we're all using the same um facilities so it should be a merry-go-round like akim said but then let's leave minimum wage and then talk about electricity tariff hike or talk about fuel scarcity that is biting everybody regardless of where you are or who you are because when i started i said no matter how finely or slickly dressed you are you will definitely go and queue for fuel unless you <laughs> exactly. don't unless you don't need fuel for your generating set or you don't need fuel for your car you would either carry um, jerry can a very dirty jerry can or however the case may be to go and look for fuel but now um, I read a particular headline. I was trying to look for it, but I didn't find it. But then you have Hi Ipman saying that's the Independent um, Petroleum uh, Marketers Association of Nigeria saying that um, the reason for this hike, the, uh, this scarcity rather, that we find these past few days that has refused to ameliorate, even though the NLC uh, Limited has said that they have enough. But then because he still finds it on the punch it says fuel scarcity federal government plans 15 day emergency fuel yes. supply but then this initially they said they have enough to go around but if man is saying that the reason why we have this scarcity is because of the israel hamas war so what exactly are your thoughts in this regard over almost um one year 12 months to fuel subsidy is gone nigerians are still queuing in the filling station day and night i remember going to church at um at 6 a.m and i saw a very long queue it means people have slept in the filling station after um fuel subsidy is gone we're still facing this what are your thoughts on this marry it together with the electricity tariff hike what do you think richard Oberi? nigeria is sincerely uh, in pain presently nigerians they are sincerely we are all sincerely in pain for the past uh, six days it was just yesterday that I was able to drive to a police station and I, I was able to buy fuel and I bought for almost 800 naira, 780 something, Amazing. approximately 800 naira. Oh, wow. So, so, so it was terrible, but uh, even before you get it, you have mm. to queue up yeah. for some hours before you are able to, you will be able to get it. And but yet you have black market boys there. And Everywhere. if you ask NNPC, the black marketers they said to them in at night mm. they said to them some fuel stations they have fear fear but they will never open up in the daytime in mm. the night the black marketers will go to them they say fear to them in the morning you see them around the Everywhere. same fuel station mm. around the same fuel station but the main station fuel station fuel station they will they not shot. be getting shut down so uh, we are our major problem and if you ask an npc they will tell you it's a logistic problem what is this logistics that we are not mm. no, we are we are not been told yeah we, we have not been told. who is in charge of this, who is in charge of this logistics what is really happening in nigeria 
And if it is the supply, if they have fuel enough, and the marketers are doing this to Nigerians, at least NNPC is a, a federal government agency. They have capacity to 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 go and uh, get a north uh, tank. Enough, uh, this uh, is a uh, truck that brings fears to almost all the parts of the country. They can over overflow the, the system with their own personal tankers, tanks that will drive with their own drivers. We go to Portacot to bring fear to the north, take fear to south, to take fear to this. We have seized geopolitical zone within one day, within two days. NNPC can resolve this problem if actually they say there's fuel enough on ground to, to be supplied to Nigerians, but. They are living, they are allowing them, they are majority, to me, majority of themselves, they have entered into this uh, business of uh, fear, fear, uh, this uh, fear business, this uh, man uh, business. They have their own personal uh, tank now that uh, take fuel to, to other part of the country. So for that reason, they don't want their personal business to suffer. And in, 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 in that case, the government tank that norm normally in those days when we were growing up, is federal government uh, tank that normally supply fuel across the country. They take fuel to NNPC fuel stations. There's no part of the country that you will not see NNPC fuel station. But today, now, they have even leased out all those uh, fuel stations to, to private workers. All right. So, so, so before we end on that, just in a in few seconds, if you can help us. Now, um, the reps... Um, House of Representatives are saying that uh, they should go for the jugula of those that are saboteuring, those that are racketeering, fuel, and then causing this scarcity. Do you think that is even possible mm -hmm. at all? Or is this just mere statement? It's not mere statement if they mean what they have said. Because the, to me, that is just the issue, the major problem. But the problem there now is that even the committee that will be set up to even go after these mm. people, the moment they take some, some funds to them, you we see back them, back they, they to, yeah, one. completely. Wow. So they will even be happy that they are, some, some members will be happy that they are part of the committee. Mm. And before you know it, the chairman of this uh, Ipman and some of these uh, private uh, organizations, this, all these, uh, 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 how will I even call them, all these uh, weekend uh, uh, business, uh, uh, <laughs> business people, they will be the one using their phone, the committee chairman possibly will be the one using his or her phone, looking for the person's phone number to call. How can we see? We are after you. How can we see? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Before you know, they will have private uh, meeting and everything will be resolved with cash. And, and we will we, we'll go back to where we will we are before so it's a lot is going event. on in the country uh, that uh, need a, a political will to resolve and the people with that political will they are the ones we are still praying for god to give to nigerians oh, oh god hasn't given them yet god has not given us the people that we have that have political will in other countries of the world just india just india of yes india all the elite in power you don't see anything other than national interest but here, we don't see national interest to be anything to us. What is so important is personal clannish and uh, family business. All right, I'm yes, um, sure our time is um, fast kicking. Now let's go to Benue State. And of course, you're from Benue State. Now this story here said, Benue to launch own security outfit. Can you talk us through, um, can you talk us through this uh, or what you think in this regard? Because of course, you're from Benue State. Benue to launch is own security, security outfit. outfit. That's, that is madness. That not is like madness. Is it not going to look like the more techo? That is madness. How many for how, how many times? Mm-hmm. Otol launches a private security outfit like two different private security outfits. One they call it a volunteer guard. Mm. The other one they call it a, 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 a they call it a, they call the second one. A, a, but how uh, this? Uh, cow something something this they say no they gave to them but the com uh, community volunteer guards they are the ones that were armed with guns under our tons administration mm. you understand mm. so if this uh, if the current administration now is coming up with another security outfit mm. what what happened to the ones launched by the immediate past administration okay in all the communities in Benue State now, those involved in that community volunteer guards, they have arms. There's no part, no, we have 276 poly political wards in Benue State. Mm. And these 276 political wards in Benue State, no ward that is left without over 50 or 16 ammunition. 
in the hands of these community volunteer guys. Oh. How we, who is managing them now? From this statement, that it shows clearly that the current administration have nothing to do with that community volunteer guard. Who is managing them? Even if they are to do away with them, who will, how will they retrieve those guns from them? So there is so much a uh, proliferation of uh, arms in the hands of uh, a, a, a wrong people in the state. With the establishment of this new one now, they will still arm them. It's, 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 it's madness. The best thing is to see if the other one is not working well, the current administration can see how to reform it. You do reformation. If you see that there are some bad elements in that community volunteer guard, you, you willow them. You fish them out and recruit new hands. But then the same thing that is happening with Amoteco, don't you think that is... This is no, no, no. What is, what, what from, to me, what me I am seeing here is any government that come on board, any new person that come on board as governor, mm -hmm. you set up your own security outfit to guide your, your, your government mm -hmm. and to be used against some political opponents. I think that is just, just what is happening. If not, what is the, the sense okay, of okay. this new uh, security outfit? What is the sense in it? When we have already established community volunteer guards established by the previous administration what does it mean the the resources the resources pumped into that uh, exercise is a waste it's, 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 sometimes sometimes the decision some government officials take we need to question them and possibly drag them to efcc to explain to us mm. it's, it's, it's wrong and i will advise that the governor reverse his statement and reverse his decision he should go back to revisit the community volunteer guards established by the previous administration. All right. And they are still, they are all government of, a uh, 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 previous administration is the state government, under the leadership of uh, the former governor, uh, Samuel Otom. This current administration is still the state government, and it's still the state resources that they will use in this. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's nonsense, it's madness. All right, let's move, let's move straight to other stories. Our time is fast spent. If you can help us in two minutes, I'll ask you two questions and I'd like you to take them together. The first one is with regards to the statement made by um, the Minister of Works, David Omahi, who said that um, uh, Peter Obi is inciting the Igbos against um, this present government with regards to the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway because according to Peter Obi, he said that's a very long-term project that will take over 30 years. So there's no need prioritizing it now when you can at least um, prioritize other things that should let us major on our major and minor on the minor things. That's what he's saying. But then on the flip side, the minister is saying that he's just trying to incite the Igbos against the um, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu's led administration. Let's get your thoughts in that regard. And secondly, like I said, if you can help us in you know, just two minutes, um, with regards to, I saw a particular headline, I was trying to look for it, but I can't find it. It talks about PDP. Someone from the, the chief team from the PDP is saying that if PDP goes down, Nigeria goes down. How possible is that if, when we have over 30 political, political parties spread across the country? Okay, let me take it from the argument between Obi and uh, David Umai. They are brothers. Obi is from Andambra, David Umai is from Ebony. And uh, I think the statement uh, coming from uh, Peter Obi is about a national matter. And uh, Peter, uh, David Umai, who is the Minister of uh, Works today, too, should look at what Obi is saying from the nat from national perspective. And if there is element of uh, truth in what Obi is saying, the best thing to do is to answer him in a very good manner. You respond to, 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 to the allegation from OB in, in, in from the administrative aspect of it and from economic terms of it. If OB is saying that uh, it's a long-term project, that might be his own personal opinion. And it is the opinion of this current administration to open up that road now. And OB of his own can equally wait if by the grace of God, when he comes to power, he will look at, into such arrangement from his own perspective, fine and good. All right. Fine and good. I think the both of them, they should not corner it to Igbo issue. Right. They should look at it as a Nigerian problem. As a, if for me, he's saying that it's a waste of resources, 
The best thing for the government to do is to come out and explain to Nigerians why it's not a waste of resources. All right. And the reason they are taking that decision now. All right. okay. Very simple. They are going to PDP matter. Uh, yes, say PDP, if PDP goes down, uh, Nigeria will go down. There is no how Nigeria will go down. Even if all the leaders of PDP or the leaders of APC should go down today, Nigeria remain Nigeria and Nigeria will continue. Right. Mm. Nothing will happen to Nigeria. It is them, they are saying with their selfish interests that will go down. And uh, as an opposition party, what role have they played for Nigerians to see that, yes, if anything happened to this party that is playing this opposition role? something definitely will happen to governance in the country. Mm. They have not really shown Nigerians that they are strong opposition. That is the truth. And if PDP go that there is still Labour Party, there is still Labour uh, Abga, there is still other political parties. So it's not about PDP going down, then Nigeria go down. That man have said something so wrong that me as a citizen, I will disagree with him that if PDP go down, Nigeria will not go down. All right. Uh, yes. Richard Uri, politician, always a pleasure having this discussion. It's my with you. pleasure. It's nice to have you, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. coming.